Cursed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned. Struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse for his promise will endure. His joy is gonna be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, joy comes with the morning. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. Yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, amen. Welcome to worship, online worship at Riverside Presbyterian Church. I'm glad you are able to join us on this Memorial Day weekend. The psalmist said, in the company of God's people, I will thank the Lord with all my heart. God's works are mighty and God's righteousness endures forever. The peace of Christ be with you. And I encourage you to share the peace of Christ with those with whom you are worshiping and if you are worshiping alone, just lift up your hand and in the spirit of God's power say, the peace of Christ be with you.
I invite you to join me as we read responsibly our Memorial Day Litany of Thanksgiving. And again, to help with the timing of the recording, I will read my part and then follow and read along with you in your part. Let us give thanks to God for the land of our birth with all its chartered liberties, for all the wonder of our country's story, for leaders of nations who have labored for the common good, for those in all times and places who have been true and brave, for those who serve their country in its hour of need, and especially those who gave even their lives in that service. Loving God, until there is war no more, and you wipe away every tear from every eye, we will remember. We will remember those who have served and died for the sake of something greater than themselves. We will remember and give thanks for the men and women who knowingly put themselves in harm's way so that others might be safer. We will remember the families who grieve this day and every day for brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, daughters and sons, friends and spouses who lost their lives while serving in the military of this country. Loving God, until you beat the swords into plowshares and the ox and the lamb lie down together, we will remember. We will remember that peace doesn't happen without peacemakers. We will remember that violence won't cease unless we stand in the breach and begin to repair it. We will remember that war is costly. The price paid is priceless in lives cut short. Loving God, until the Prince of Peace returns and death and crying are no more, we will remember. We will remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice. We will support those left bereft in their absence. We will remember to seek reconciliation knowing that while we cannot control the ways of the world, we can seek to work for peace in our own lives and communities. Loving God, until there is no need for men and women to place themselves in harm's way, we will remember. We will remember and give thanks for those who did and died. In the name of the one who grants us the peace that passes understanding, we will remember and give thanks. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember and give thanks for those who have given their lives in the service of our country. When the need was greatest, they stepped forward and did their duty to defend the freedoms we enjoy and to win that same freedom for others. These honored dead gave the most precious gift they had, life itself. They gave it for loved ones and neighbors, for comrades and country, and for us. Help us to honor their memory by caring for the family members they left behind, by ensuring that their wounded comrades are properly cared for, by being watchful caretakers of the freedoms for which they gave their lives, and by demanding that no other young men and women follow them to a soldier's grave. Help us to remember that freedom is not free, that there are times when its cost is indeed dear. Never let us forget those who paid so terrible a price to ensure that freedom would be our legacy. Though their names may fade with the passing of generations, may we never forget what they have done. Help us be worthy of their sacrifice. This prayer and every prayer we offer in Jesus' name, closing with the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our worship theme is building blocks and stepping stones for the Christian walk. But I'm going to interrupt that series today as we celebrate Memorial Day. I've chosen two passages of scripture for the purpose of the message today. The first one is from Joshua chapter 4 verses 1 through 7. When the entire nation had finished crossing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Select twelve men from the people, one from each tribe, and command them. Take twelve stones from here out of the middle of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood, carry them over with you, and lay them down in the place where you camp tonight. Then Joshua summoned the twelve men from the Israelites whom he had appointed, one from each tribe. Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan, and each of you take up a stone on his shoulder, one for each of the tribes of the Israelites, so that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in times to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off in front of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the Israelites a memorial forever. And then just one verse from 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Jasana, and named it Ebenezer. For he said, Thus far the Lord has helped us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this good day. Help us do good with it. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Thus began the very first Memorial Day address or speech. Not officially, not formally, because Memorial Day as a national observance had not yet been established. But the words of Abraham Lincoln, forever remembered as the Gettysburg Address, express the sentiment that would eventually lead to the creation of the national holiday. Less than two minutes later, Lincoln concluded, the world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be here dedicated to the unfinished work which they who fought here thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to the cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people by the people and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Over the next few years, many communities set aside special days to honor the fallen soldiers of the Civil War. Some services were held with little fanfare. Others involved marching bands and speeches. All included decorating the soldiers' graves with flowers and flags. Most towns referred to the event as Decoration Day. 
After World War I, the day expanded to honor the American heroes of all wars. Gradually, the custom of decorating the graves of relatives and friends became a part of that day. Eventually, the official name was changed to Memorial Day by an act of Congress, and a national holiday was established for the last Monday in May. For most Americans, it's just another holiday. It marks the beginning of summer. It is the weekend of the Indianapolis 500. School's out, the pool is open, the boat is in the water, and the barbecue grill is ready to go. Of course, in Florida, we don't have to wait for the end of May to enjoy these warm weather activities. But this year, of course, throughout the country, Memorial Day celebrations are severely limited because of COVID-19. There's a dilemma for the preacher. You see, there's nothing in the Bible that speaks to Memorial Day as we know it. Churches often have worship services with this theme. Most churchgoers expect it and will be disappointed or upset if it doesn't happen. But there's no biblical basis for what we do. And no biblical basis for preaching on the subject of Memorial Day. I didn't want to say this without doing my homework, so I consulted Professor Google. Here's the question I ask. What does the Bible say about honoring those who have died in war? And here's what I found. There were 19,400,000 results. I didn't have time to read all that, so I settled for the top five. Now again, my question was, what does the Bible say about honoring the dead who died in war? The top five results for that question referred me to the following topics. What the Bible says about honor. What the Bible says about honoring fathers and mothers what the Bible says about death, what the Bible says about Christian martyrs, and what the Bible says about marriage. Yeah, I don't understand it either. I have no idea what the Bible's teaching about marriage has to do with honoring the dead. It's just another warning not to trust the internet. What is most common for Memorial Day preaching are sermons about our military heroes who have sacrificed their lives to defend our freedom and our country. And the preacher uses a passage of scripture which he must take completely out of context and hope folks are so caught up in national pride they won't notice that the scripture and the sermon don't match. The best we can do on this occasion is to choose a related topic that is supported by a biblical text. For example, the Bible does talk about the idea of remembrance and the idea and practice of marking important events and places as memorials. On several occasions, the Bible talks about erecting stones of remembrance. But once again, we have to be careful because remembrance in the Bible is not so much about remembering individuals who have died. It's about remembering God who sustains both our living and our dying. That's what we see in the text I read just a few moments ago. In the Joshua story, the entire nation of Israel, on their way to the Promised Land, has safely crossed the Jordan River. It is another miracle story of the waters parting so that the people could cross. In response, Joshua commands the twelve tribal leaders to each take a stone from the dry riverbed and set that stone up in the camp to be a memorial forever. They are to erect a monument or memorial 
to the God who had kept the covenant and had once again delivered his people. In the Samuel story, the armies of Israel have defeated the Philistines. Samuel commemorates the victory by erecting a stone monument. He names the stone Ebenezer, which means the Lord has helped us. Samuel makes no mention of a memorial for those who died in the battle. In both of these stories, the people erect stones of remembrance. They create lasting memorials, not for the fallen, but to the God who lives, the God who has delivered and sustained his people, perhaps through the services of the fallen. Does all this mean we should not celebrate Memorial Day in the church? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we, if we are going to say that the Bible is true, then we should be true to what the Bible says. Here then is the bottom line. If our Memorial Day celebrations are about remembering those who have died, decorating the graves, and making speeches extolling the sacrifice our soldiers have made for the cause of freedom and country, then we have to base that celebration, that fanfare, that remembrance, we have to base it on our love of country. And there's nothing wrong with that. We just can't base that on some biblical story or biblical basis for such a celebration. But if we shift the focus of our Memorial Day celebrations to a remembrance of how God has blessed us, then we can preach and teach from the Bible. In the Joshua story, the stones of remembrance are set up not as a memorial to anyone who has died, but as a memorial to the circumstances of life that turned out well for God's people. Joshua commanded his men to set up these stones to celebrate their good fortune and providence in God's hands. And that good fortune, that good providence, Joshua believed, was the result of their covenant with God. He didn't think the people needed a memorial to their losses. He thought they needed a memorial to their gains. They needed a memorial for what they had been through. They needed a memorial for who they had become. They needed a memorial for the God who brought them to this point. If Memorial Day is a celebration of what God has done, which includes delivering us from our enemies through the valor of our military men and women, then we have a biblical basis for what we do. From that perspective, the preacher can faithfully call the congregation to remembrance and to memorials without doing violence to the scriptures. I have often seen church signs with this message on Memorial Day weekend. The message is, the land of the free because of the courage of the brave. That, I believe, is true. I strongly believe that we have this land of the free because of the courage of the brave. But that is national pride. That is a secular conviction. This message is on a church sign, but it could just as well be on a bank sign. You don't have to believe in God to believe that we have this land of the free because of the courage of the brave. That message again is true, but it bears no evidence of Christian truth. A better message for a church sign would be the land of the free and the courage of the brave are gifts from God thus far 
has the Lord helped us. We have this free land, and we have the brave who make it so by defending it. Because, as Samuel said, thus far the Lord has helped us. So let us speak of the blessings of liberty. Let us celebrate this land that we love as a gift from God. Let us remember and memorialize those who died to protect our freedom. And let us, yes, set up, establish, erect stones of remembrance on their behalf. Let us celebrate Memorial Day not only to remember those brave men and women, but also to remember God and his work on our behalf again thus far the Lord has helped us that I believe is the message of the Bible for Memorial Day yes again we should celebrate and commemorate those who have served the cause of liberty we should decorate the graves wave the flag have parades and picnics we should offer up our prayers at Thanksgiving for our brave soldiers who died in the service of the country. Yes, but let us put their sacrifices in the context of what God has done through them. The siren call for the church and in the church must always be, thus far the Lord has helped us. That's the biblical message for this otherwise secular holiday. Thus far, the Lord has helped us. Thanks for listening.
honor the claim of God on your life. Be the disciple Jesus has called you to be. And when you struggle with that responsibility, when you've done as much as you think you can do, when you've gone as far as you think you can go, when you've held your chin up as long as you think you possibly can and you feel like quitting, don't do it. Just reach back a little farther, dig a little deeper, and do the best you can. Remember, God has never asked for anything but our best. And if we'll give God our best, God will gather up the best from each of us and change the world. Grace and peace to you this day and every day. away.